Okay, everybody, welcome once again to Extreme Memories right here on the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Please like, share, comment, uh, subscribe, turn the red to gray. And we do new episodes on the 15th and 30th of every month, Extreme Memories right here on the Wrestling Chatter channel. And I got a very special guest. I got two special guests today, uh, two for the price of one, fan. So, oh, you, you lucked out. You're, that's you're right. That's a, right. An invoice for me later. That's right. Well, well, ladies first, Super Genie, welcome. This is a, this is the first Thanks. time you and I have actually met. So, uh, welcome to Extreme Memories, and of course, the former XPW two-time, if if I recall, two-time XPW World Heavyweight Champion. The one and only, the great Sabu and Sabu. There you go, man. Oh man, you got a lot of fans out there. That's today. been. You got excuse I'm not wearing a turban today because they got all bloody from this weekend. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. We can get into that, but um, uh, you have definitely been one of the most requested wrestlers to be on this show, Sabu. So I'm going to thank you on behalf of all the fans out there, and uh, just welcome once again. Uh, great to see you again, bro. It's been quite a while, man. Ten years. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's been about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me ask you, let me just kick it off. You know, we, we all know the history. Uh, we're we're going to talk about most things XPW on this show. And uh, because you, you have such a storied uh, history, uh, a storied career, and it goes back not only just to you, but your your uncle, the original Sheik. I mean, all that information is out there. We'll touch on that. But uh Right when that, well, I want to kick it off right now. Before you got into XPW, you were wrestling uh, different matches in Los Angeles on the West Coast from time to time, correct? Yeah, from and, time to time, yeah. Right. What were your memories of um, of wrestling in Los Angeles in the mid nineties? In the in the mid late nineties, it was fun. It was great. We had good houses and uh, good matches, and uh, we got paid pretty good. So I had fun. I remember, I remember a story. I think it was on one of those like A and E documentaries where, like, uh, maybe it was you and Terry Funk or you and Al Snow, and it was in L.A. somewhere. And then the neighbors, it was like surrounding suburbs, and they called the cops. The cops. Oh ended up yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wrestled Al Snow, and uh, Terry Funk did a run in. So he thought they thought he's some drunk guy off the street. They didn't know that he was Terry Funk. Oh, <laughs> so they man. called the police. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, and, and, and the great part about that story, which I love, is that when the cops came to see what all the ruckus was, they look in, all you guys are, it's mayhem everywhere, but then the cops go, oh, it's pro wrestling. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. Was so, so, so let me ask you this, Sabu. Before, before you got to XPW, which was in the year 2000, was there any buzz of XPW in, let's say, like the summer of 99 when, when XPW was just launching? Do you remember hearing a buzz? Yeah, yeah but, but it was like uh, I, was, I, was, I was in ECW, so the, the buzz didn't, bother, didn't, didn't affect me much. Afterwards, when I left ECW, it did because I needed another place to work. Right, right. And I, and I think that was, um, you know, I, I, I love that story, by the way. Speaking of ECW, I love that story about when you – basically turned down WWE because you knew that you were not going to be yourself in that company. I always, I always admired that. I know a lot of fans did as well, too. Well, Marco said to me, not be, Marco didn't even know I had an interview with him, but uh, um, he always said to me, if it's not going to make you proud, if you're not going to be proud of yourself, don't do it. And I knew right. you know, I wouldn't have been proud of myself because, uh, you know, they want to be the, the Iron Sheik to be my uncle. And they, they wanted me to change my book a little bit to make it third look, you know. So right. uh, it, it would have nothing. I'd have been a, a whole, totally different character. I would have made a lot of money, maybe, uh, maybe. But uh, I wasn't looking for money at the time. Right, right. I think you know, man. I, I honestly, I think you, you in the wrestling industry, Sabu, you that there, there's a lot of good tributes to you with that. I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, but there's not too many guys that would do that to be the true to the. Uh, to the industry, to, to your own, to your own I art. I call it. Thank so, you, thank you. Yeah, I was able to express myself the way I wanted to and the way I was doing. They would have changed me, and I would have been a product of them, which would not make me very proud of myself. I, I remember talking as as an announcer myself, like when Joey Styles and and I became good friends, and he got me a trout in WWE, and I just remember thinking to myself, like, and he would tell me too, like, you know, you guys are being yourself. You guys are being you over there. We're, we got people in our ears and all that. So it's good tributes to you, man. 
Um, were you aware, uh, Sabu, when when um, when you were in ECW, or even just after, or right in the in between time of ECW XPW? But were you ever aware of the friendship and the business relationship between Paul Heyman and Rob Black? No, not at all. I never heard Rob Black name until he called me. I didn't know, like I heard Bubba Dudley say it before, but it was he was he was like a promoter or something. I didn't know that he ran, you know, was going to be a boss of a show or a rival show. Paul and him were friends. I didn't know that. Dave yeah. Just said, yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, they were they were they were working together in conjunction with like Rob would supply uh girls like Jasmine St. Clair and all the, the ring girls for 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 Paul. But but the the story goes that these two guys were just in a way they were just too similar. They were it was only a bound to happen. They were gonna butt heads. Um and and um and so that's when Rob uh basically formed XPW. If I'm not gonna work with Paul anymore. I'm going to work and do my own thing on the West Coast. And that's when XPW was born, basically. Um, yeah, I, I had no idea that, that Paul even knew Rob Black before that. I had no idea. How, how, did, you, how did you first be, uh, – who called you from, from XPW? How did you uh, get approached by them? Uh, Kevin Kleinrock. Okay. And, yeah, and now this was, this was prior to you becoming friends with Josh Lazy, correct? Yes. Okay. Like, uh, he became my he was my manager. Plus, he's like my best friend there. Like we, we were partners. You guys were close. That's for sure, man. And and um, and he was always seemed like a guy you could trust and and um, and all that. But um, how was how was that? Because you guys, it felt like when you and Lazy were together, whether it was on camera in the ring or whether it was just backstage when we saw you guys, it felt like you guys were like friends for years, but you weren't. No, well, we're only friends a short time. Just that you know, sometimes uh, you, the, the personality somebody has, you gravitate towards them, and that's kind of personality he had. I gravitated towards him, big time. And, and the chemistry was there. You could see it. You could tell. And I, and I always liked, I always liked your guys' partnership. I thought you, you, you were already proven, proven entity in the business. But it was, it was almost like a, um, like a, a breath of fresh air for for what you were already doing to have this like new manager in my in my advice. yeah yeah I liked him as a manager he was very good I liked him yeah he was a cool guy um what was the difference uh what would you say like the biggest difference or was there a difference between the ECW locker room and the XPW locker room um well the XPW locker room was cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Uh, okay. there was, there was the difference. I, I always stuck to myself in ECW and I stuck to myself in XPW, kind of, you know, me and Lazy. Uh, so it, it was pretty much the same. Everybody was just trying to be the best, you know, trying to right. do their best. And what, what did it mean to you when, when you came out here? I want to say your first show for XPW, if I'm not mistaken, was at the L.A. Sports Arena, correct? It could have been. Uh, I don't quite remember the, the first time. but uh, Okay. <laughs> Candy. Yeah, that was yeah, that was when you were in a three-way. Okay, so yeah, wow, check this out. We're like literally, we're literally uh, like twenty-one years. Uh, it, it, anyway, April of two thousand. It was um, unbelievable. It was Candido and you and Shane Douglas at the LA Sports Arena. That was your debut. Right was, was that was that um? So so that that would you say that was a far cry from? when you were wrestling in Southern California in the late nineties, going from that to XPW and the LA sports arena where WrestleMania two WrestleMania seven was, was that a big leap for you too? Was that, a, was that special? Yeah. 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 Because, uh, you know, I felt like XPW was going places, you know, I thought they were, you know, and, uh, and at the time I did like Rob Black and I, I really liked Kevin Klein rock and lazy and those guys, I really liked those guys. So I wanted to work and I was trying hard, you know, I tried hard to make it work. Yeah, you were, man. And and if anybody, you know, I, a lot of people, I'm not taking anything away from Shane Douglas or Chris Candido, but when you came into the company, in in my estimation, I know Shane Douglas had that uh, kind of like that, that classic promo when he first came into XPW. I'm going to put this company on my shoulder. I'm going to take it to the promised land. But I think your, just your presence, when you came to the ring, you know, all that and, and it was like the crowd the fans were rabid i think i think that just really set xpw uh to a whole new level at that point in my in my book you know and and you and you really 
were an innovator in many ways with hardcore wrestling because you you were a hardcore wrestler, but you, you also added this high flying, just very mysterious guy gimmick. And it and it worked, it translated. You you kind of know who Shane Douglas, who Chris Candido are, but you have the suspension of disbelief that was kind of true to the old school that that you know. Right on, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's true, man. I mean, you you ask, you watch, you watch the comments below. It's not just me saying this, bro. But um <laughs> Yeah, but no, but that's great, man. And then um, let me, okay, so I asked you the differences between the locker room. Did you see any significant difference really in, in the ECW fan as opposed to the XPW fan at all? No, not really. They seem like the same group of people, like the same rabid, hardcore, bloodthirsty fans that want bullshit. You know? They want from bullshit. They want a good bullshit. Right. And exactly, yeah, they wanted – Bullshit they can believe in, if that makes sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and um and and that was the goal of, of that company, you know, because as you know, we were coming out of a time and you were one of the forefathers of that. We were coming out of a kind of a cartoony time in, in the wrestling business. And then you were just one of the guys again who just didn't sell out to that. You literally did not sell out to that. I mean, the money that you left on the table and then you were one of those guys that changed the industry you know and then of course wwe they i feel they copied that and claimed that you know the attitude era this is right. what changed it but they That's really true. took from yes from from your world from and stuff we were doing too and you know, I mean, unfortunately, they're kind of writing the history books. And that's why that's why I like to do shows like this. One of the reasons I like to do shows like this to get get these voices out there and you can use the Internet now to, to your advantage. So that's what hopefully this will be. And also not censoring any of the fans comments down here. So that's always good. Um, let me ask you this, Sabu. So you were you were with um, XPW at the time, because, again, this is like when we were at the L.A. Sports Arena. And then we transitioned to um, – we, we unfortunately had to transition to um, uh, Patriot Hall, which was a high school in Van Nuys. And then from there, we went to the Grand Olympic Auditorium. Right. Um, now, my, my question for you is, did your, your uncle, he, did he had matches at the Olympic? Yeah, of did course, against Fred Blassie. Right, okay. And I don't know if he had matches at the sports arena, though. Probably not, no? I don't know. I you know. I'm sure he has, but you know, I I don't know. It's before my time. Okay, so so when you when you walked into the Olympic Auditorium, you you knew like that your uncle had been there. Oh yeah. It, it yeah. Was, okay. So it was a, a scary feeling and, and an awesome feeling. A lot of pressure. Yeah, because I wanted to live up to you know his name. Absolutely right, man. I think you did that and then some. And um, thank you. Um, but uh. So okay, so you okay, so that was at the LA Sports Arena, and then later on we went to the Olympic Auditorium, uh, which is, I believe, your last show with the company, and that was when you and Lazy kind of took off. Yeah. Okay. But that that was when um, uh, Messiah was fucking around with Rob Black's wife, girlfriend, and right. then, uh, they were trying to kill him that day when I was supposed to wrestle him, so they changed the match to me and uh, Johnny. Me versus Johnny Webb with a double as a Rob Black yeah. or something like that. I can't remember what exactly. Yeah, it was like um, Johnny Webb went to the back and then they dragged him back out. But it was really Rob Black. Actually, that was that was I, I thought that was pretty well done, well orchestrated with the twins and nobody knew. Uh, Damage Incorporated. But but how did you how did you find the news that oh hey Sabu or did was it Lazy that told you? Did Kevin tell you? Explain to you like were were you gone at that time? Or were they I, just saying? I was pretty much gone. I, I was going to leave because you know, you know, like any relationship, it, it turns a little sour, and it was getting sour at the time. The, the money wasn't wasn't what they promised, and uh, uh, it, was, it was just getting sour. It was time to go. Right. Okay. And and um, and of course, there's a whole different story between Rob Black and Lazy. There was some there was some drama there with with like some movie stuff or whatever. You know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> So, but we will get into that with another interview with another wrestler, which we've already had talked about that on this show. But um, so let me ask you this. So again, you were with XPW at the time and 
at the time of the heat wave incident. And, and we did a, when, when heat wave, ECW heat wave came into the Olympic auditorium during the time when XPW was doing shows at the LA sports arena, right down the street from the Olympic, um, uh, both pres equally prestigious arenas to work in, I would say, you know, arguably it's, it's, your opinion could go with the Olympic or the sports arena. They're both, they're both big time places, but ECW was at the Olympic auditorium for their big heat wave pay-per-view. Now Rob Black and a lot of XPW guys kind of took exception to this because ECW never went anywhere other than the East coast, maybe a little bit into the Midwest, but then they jumped to LA once XPW started making waves. Now I don't need, you know, you don't have to give me your opinion on what was right or wrong, but um, what were your thoughts when you saw that go down also knowing that you're going to be competing for this company, XPW, one week later down the street from the Olympic at the L.A. Sports Arena. Yeah, uh, I didn't know nothing about it. They didn't ask me to do anything or be a part of right. it. If I would have known ahead of time, I would have stopped them. I thought it was so stupid to do that, to interfere with their show. You know, And then ECW thought I had a rivalry against them. I didn't have no rivalry. It was just I was wanting to work at some place too. You know? Right. Yeah, you were you were just you were just working wrestling show basically. And well, I and, told say I was taking food off their table by working for XBW. I said, but what about food for my table? I don't get to make right. food for my table. I think I don't think anybody has the right, honestly, hear me out. I don't think anybody has the right to tell you who did not sell out for the big corporate WWE um, giant. No one ever has the right to tell you what you're doing or who you're taking money from. You all, well, all do. <laughs> yeah, you already proved that, you know? So, so I think that was a lot of sour grapes. It doesn't matter. I don't think it mattered who was with XPW because that was an upper management decision. What happened at heat wave, you know? Right. And, and you're right. So the thing to do with it, I would have stopped it. Right. Okay. There you go. There you go. So, and, and I'm sure that answered a lot of questions right there. Um, but you, you talked about, but, oh, let me ask you this too. I think, were you gone? You were gone by the time um, the scaffold match, the XPW free fall event. I think I might've been there or that was my last time there. No, they, I think, did they, did they do two scaffolds? I think I wasn't there for the second one. Okay. Oh, okay. So I don't think you were there for it, but you remember the, the Vic Grimes New Jack event. Uh, yeah. What were your thoughts when you saw that go down? <laughs> I didn't have much thought about it. It wasn't all uh, Vic Grimes' fault. It was both of their fault. They clumsy, they tripped over each other and did like a flip, and one guy landed on the other guy. It was, it was a pretty bad bump, but I don't think it was Vic Grimes' fault. You know, right? It was nobody's it's, fault. It just happened. Right now, you're also the only XPW champion to defend the title outside of the United States. And I actually, I was actually at one of those shows in Tijuana. I want to say where you were. You, you were defending that title and we all went down and um, I can't remember who it was against, but it was a death match and you were defending the XPW world title uh, outside of the United States. I'm sorry. I think, against, I think it was against Damien maybe. Okay. Yeah. I remember it was another guy that was a part of XPW. Right. Damien. Yeah. So, so that, how was that? Because you really did represent that company on, on a global basis. And I don't know if anybody, one, would have, could have done that or would have had the um, attention. If, if it was another wrestler with the title, you, it might not have given the company that much attention, even if they were champion, because you were the champion and you had a name all over the world. Yeah, I also defended the belt in Japan and right. England and a few other places. I can't remember, maybe Germany, maybe. Wow. Yeah, I remember one of the events uh, at Patriot Hall when Lazy came out and you weren't there and you literally, it was it was a shoot. He was saying, well, right now Sabu's in Japan. And then I think you're right. I think he said, and then he's going to be in Germany. So you you really, you went all over with that belt. Yeah, I, I did. I tried to push it. I tried to help him. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why that's why I say like if, if all the guys, of all the guys that were um, – claim to have been the guys to like kind of put the league over. I, I, I would always argue that, I mean, yourself and Terry Funk, I, in my, in my view is on top of that list, you know, as at the top of that list that, that 
you know, fans were like, oh, wait, wait, who's wrestling for them? Oh, who's their champion? I think that that went a long way. But correct me if I'm wrong. I think you also had a lot of respect for getting the local guys over as well. And kind yeah, of, of course. You can't have a successful company without local guys. The, the lower paid guys would need more respect and more, more practice. You know? and, and that, and that's, and that I think spoke volumes to not just the local wrestlers in XPW, but the fan base, because you had a loyal West coast XPW fan base. Those that already liked you for who you were, but then you add to that. Oh, you know what? Sabu's kind of meshing himself with the, with these boys He's not just, hey, I'm going to come put you over and then you guys have your match under me. It didn't feel like that when you were in the ring with, like, let's say the Messiah or let's say Kid Chaos or Supreme, you know. Right on. Do you do you have any memories, by the way, um, Sabu? I know we just, unfortunately, we just lost not too long ago. We lost a few guys, dude. But, but recently, the King of the Death match, the one and only Lester Supreme, he did pass away. Do you have any uh, stories like you and him, ribs, whatever they are, just, you know, chilling uh, together? No, it's not really. I didn't, I didn't talk to him that much. Although he did come see me the last time I was in L.A. I worked for um, AWS, a bar. Okay. And he came in yeah. there and, and said hello and all that stuff. So it was good to see him. Any any other guys that 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 we've lost that you have any any memories of? I mean, I mean, look, we lost a lot, dude. Yeah, but I, I don't like going down memory lanes when the guys are dead. Okay, you got it. You got it, man. Um, but thank you for that, for, for talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Rest in peace, big time. Um, now, you, you you kind of elaborated a little bit earlier. Um, uh, this is a little, a little bit to unpack, but what are your thoughts on Rob Black? Uh, I kind of liked him, and I kind of didn't like him. He, he was all right. Just that yeah. um, he tried to, towards the end before I quit or left, he was, it was the Rob Black show, which was silly, you know. Yeah, right. It was pretty silly, and I couldn't stand watching it no more, and or being around it no more. But, uh, I, I kind of liked him. He was all right. He, he had uh, good intentions. Sort of. Right. I I agree. I mean, you kind of the Messiah. I'm sorry. I don't like what he did to Messiah. It was dumb. I mean, crazy man. It, yeah, it's crazy. I mean. What what were your thoughts when you heard about that? Like when you when where were you when you heard that news, man? I said, of course. I, I believed every word of it before I even found out if it was true or not. When I first heard it, I said, of course it's true. <laughs> right. And and at that point, it was like, I mean, man. And then and then he got on America's Most Wanted. They did that yeah, that yeah. thing. Um, what were you? Did you did you think like that was it? That was the end of the company when that happened? Or oh yeah, definitely. You can't get you can't live through that. You know, especially with the, with the boss is being accused of, of trying to kill somebody. You know, and, and, and I believe he tried to do it. <laughs> and and also the the federal government. Did do you remember when that happened? When well, they, they raided? They put uh, some porno tapes across state lines and got them right. For that. Yeah. Yeah. Did did you were you just like uh, when that happened? Were you surprised, by the way, Sabu, when when ECW went out of business before XPW? Like XPW hung on a little bit longer. <laughs> um, not not really surprised because you know Paul didn't have any more money, and uh, the guys are, got tired of working for free. You know they couldn't, uh, they were never going to get paid, and so uh, no, I wasn't surprised. I seen it coming. Right on, and then and then. Was that basically when you answered that question why you left XPW? Was that just was that just uh, disagreements? Was it money? Was it all of the above? It was kind of all of the above. Uh, it wasn't fun no more. Rob was, was taking the, wanted me to be personal with him and Messiah and, and, and his girlfriend and all that. Not not personally, personally, but but wanted me to care about it. And I didn't care about it. It was it wasn't my problem. You know, right? I do business. I didn't want to cut off somebody's dick or thumb. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think any of us. I don't think any of us wanted to do that. But um, <laughs> do, you, do you do you have do you have a favorite? Like, I guess I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's either the Olympic or the LA Sports Arena. Do you? And we had others too. We we did the historic Strongbow Stadium, the Ventura the, Theater, the, the the Olympic. I, I like working at the Olympic. The yeah, the Olympic Olympics. Auditorium. I mean, I mean, no, LA Sports Arena. That's where we had the big XVW thing. We fell down and stuff. Yeah. That's yes. Yeah. 
let me ask you when that happened when that happened when you when you it was you and terry funk it was go funk yourself and they used that clip over and over like in the tv intro because you never seen anything like that before where it wasn't a gimmick the whole entrance way just came crashing down <laughs> when we got into the ring terry funk got mad because there's thumbtacks in the ring already so we, we took it outside but he, he got he took it personal that he didn't want to roll around on someone else's thumbtacks i don't blame him but we were already out there so i just followed him you know uh, you know you know i remember if you watch that okay if you watch go funk yourself right that that match you sir you actually your, your buddy peewee moore referee yeah. He 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 was in the ring. You come in. You you you're looking down, kind of kicking the thumbtacks, and then the ring. You you I think you signal like we need a broom. We need a broom. And then the ring crew guy comes up and hands the broom to the referee. And you man, you got pissed. <laughs> you just took it from the ref and you threw it back to the ring crew. Say you get in here, dude. That's your job, you know. Right. And you were right. You were right, you know. But the thing was, when, when he swept the thumbtacks, it just rubbed them into the mat. And we swept right. them off the mat. It was just under the ring. And then when you pull the table out or something, there's thumbtacks all over the place. You know, um, I don't know if you remember Gary Key. He was the guy that was Tool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him. Yeah, he, he was a bit of a veteran like yourself. He had been in the business for a long time. He actually built all that. He, oh, did he? he? Was, yeah, he was a carpenter. And I remember in the back when you guys did that, he goes, all right. <laughs> but um, yeah, but but no, that was that was not planned, right? When you guys took that entrance down. No, that was an accident. That was a complete accident. That was, but, but in a weird way, that ended up becoming like this thing of beauty for this extreme hardcore league. Like even the entrance way, like, Again, it wasn't foam. It was it was, wood. It was heavy. pieces of metal and wood. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys could have got seriously hurt because you were right underneath that. If you right. remember, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sabu. Like a lot of people say, the Olympic they hold dear to their heart, but I personally, I love working at the LA Sports Arena as well, man. Yeah, and that's when you debuted too. Uh, sounds good. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this: Speaking of your matches, um. Do you do you have whether it's multiple or, or one? Do you have a favorite or favorite opponent opponent in XPW or or or, or, or even favorite moment in XPW? Uh, well, my favorite opponent would be Terry Funk and Messiah. I like I always liked wrestling Messiah. He, he was pretty good. Yeah, you guys had good matches. Yeah, so I, yeah, I always liked wrestling him. So, so my favorite opponent would be him and Terry Funk. You know. And, okay. Uh, there's not one Pacific match I like more than the other. I, I kind of like them all. Do you do you have one like a favorite, maybe the, your top three moments of you you your participation in XPW? Well, one of the top three moments is that is the uh, XPW uh, went to play falling down, and then uh, there right. was one time Terry Funk blew fire and I blocked it with a table. I think I was like the, that. Who's the guy from Get Down Sick? I don't remember you guys. That's down the Jap manager. Japanese. Who was yeah. Yeah. And uh, anything with Lazy was always a favorite moment. I liked working with him all the time. Yeah. I, I, like I said. When they burned down the Japanese flag. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah what, what venue was that? That I went to that one show. I used to live in L.A. doing uh, fitness modeling and bodybuilding. So I came out to, to one show and hung out with Sabu most of the time. That was, what, 200, two, yeah, 2000. 2001. 2001. Yeah, that would have been it. That would have been yeah, it. Yeah, Sabu had a unique way of opening up bottles of wine. He would just smash them against the the, <laughs> I the, remember the, that. In the bathroom, you know, because you can't really find a um, you can't really find a, a a corkscrew too well, I guess. Right. I don't remember right. what hotel that was either, but do you, it was do an you, interesting uh, show. How about your How about your memories? Do you have any uh, other than that? Do you have your own XPW memories? Um, I just know when I was there, I was, I was really, really muscular and I can't remember what was going on because I, I was competing at the time as a pro. So the okay. whole night, all these people kept staring at me because I guess they thought I was going to run up into the ring and I was already hired to cause shows. <laughs> but, uh, I, I was, a, 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 the bodybuilding industry was pretty clean and streamlined at the time. So it wasn't really good for me to be around all these, uh, porno, uh, 
<laughs> porno girl <laughs> right. you know, people selling stuff. So I, you know, that's the only show I ever went to because it uh, for for me because uh, I, I did I did every magazine and I was ninth right. in the world. It probably would have caused problems for me um, within right. that industry within that business. But to, that's the only show I got. But I remember reading about XPW magazines with that story about Masai, Messiah. So I was a you know a wrestling fan and I was just into that sort of. Uh, I would get the wrestling magazines too and check them out. And I watched WWE, okay. of course, a lot, you know, because everybody was all into China. So people would all suggest I try wrestling, which which I did. Oh, wow. So I first met her was uh, 2001 in XVW. Then I met her 10 years later in WWE. And then five oh. years later, uh, recently. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, cross paths way, like, way back to 2001. Yeah. yeah it was, it was, it was like, it was like it was meant to be. And, yeah. and you, if you're not going to, uh, if you're not going to acknowledge this sign, I'll give you another sign 10 years later, five years later. Yeah. Right. That's and awesome. At the time when I first met her, I was married. And I and she, sometimes she said, like, she didn't trust me. Then I go, remember when I, when I, we stayed in the same room, we stayed in the same room. Wasn't I a complete gentleman to you? She said, yes. Yeah. Did, did I ever hit on you or anything like that? She goes, no. I said, where did I sleep? So you slip at the, at the, at the table in the room, in the chair. So oh, I wow. Like that. You know, so I, I was a, a gentleman. I'm, I'm always a gentleman to almost everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, I remember. Um, I remember. Uh, oh boy, if I could. If uh, oh yeah, so so the Japanese flag. I don't know if you remember this, Sabu, but when you were we we did we had the probably one of the biggest missed opportunities in the history of professional wrestling, and, and I think you know what I'm talking about. And that was it was going to be yourself. And Asushi Onita, it was going to yes. be the yep, it was going to be the first ever exploding ring cage death match in the history of the United States. What happened? Um, in um, the history, of the Rob Black ended up cutting Onita out, and they wanted to do it without him. And I, I right. Um, he was my old boss. Oh, yeah. So 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 basically, Onita's crew came over. We did the whole press conference. We did right. the whole press conference where you came in. Um, and then uh, uh, Onita attacked you, or you 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 came in and threw the table, yeah. And 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 you when you were signing the contract is when Onita sneak attacked you, and you guys we let the freaking uh, room on fire at the at the <laughs> Air, <laughs> at the Airtel Hotel, and they were burning the American flag, and there was press there. Uh, this was a big deal at the time, and and uh, the press was there. Channel. Seven News, one of them, and KFI Radio, like they were all there. And and then when Rob Black, like you burn the flag, uh, they burn the flag. Rob Black wiped his ass with the American flag, like it was, it was a big deal. And and so, but then Onita said, I remember like the Klein Rock, like you guys are gonna have to pay big money for our crew to come out and do this death match. So they didn't want to pay that, and then missed opportunity big time, man, because. Because again, that would have been the first exploding ring cage, steel cage death match in, in US history. And it would probably have been held at the LA Sports Arena. Probably, yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. But you know, when you guys a big missed opportunity, big one. Oh, probably the biggest in company history. Probably because because that was not just a missed opportunity for XPW, but that was a missed opportunity for the wrestling industry and the history it would have had. Because uh, I'm sure we would have had a stellar match, you know. You know, Nita had good chemistry together, and, and I, I was begging for a match like that. I even told, almost had another match with him in Japan, where we set up for another explosion match, and that fell through somehow. But I, wow. I, I really wanted to wrestle him in an explosion match because I know, I know, uh, you know, it'd be good. Yeah, looking back on that now, I'm sure Kevin Kleinrock wishes like, ah, oh, we should have just paid the, well, however much it was, fifteen grand, whatever it was. You look back on that now and. You think of all the money wasted on other things, and like, right. oh, yeah. But 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 I will tell you this. I remember. I don't know if you remember this, Sabu, but we we were before we knew that match wasn't going to happen. You remember, like you and Lazy on one of the on one of the promo skits. You guys came to the office, knocked on the door, and and nobody answered the door. And then you you laid out the Japanese flag. And I don't know if you really urinated on it or was it was it. No, it was just like a, it was like yellow Gatorade or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, 
Yeah, but that of all the crazy stuff XPW did, that was the one thing that that took us off of uh, a lot of our syndicates on television. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's not your fault. It was if that was just written for you to do, but but my point is um it's weird it's weird the things they 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 choose. Like we're doing all this stuff with sex, drugs, blood, barbed wire, but that's what got us off of television. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, but then but then as months went on, we we regained those those syndicates, you know, because people forget, you know. But um quick, who contacted you? Fast forward a few years, who contacted you for when we did our reunion shows, Cold Day in Hell, uh, XPW 10? I, I think Kevin Clyde rocked it. And how, how was that to you when you saw all those years later, you saw that huge fan base was still still rabid and still yeah, wanting it? It was great. It was good to see that. It felt good that uh, the people remembered and, and we brought them back. And, and, and we, I'm sorry? I said it's good that we got them back. Exactly right. And unfortunately, that was right before the crash of 08. And we were supposed to keep doing like monthly or bi-monthly pay-per-views, but it never unfolded. Uh, but at least we got to do that one show. And um, and that was great, man. It really was. And um, let me ask you this, Sabu. You obviously have a storied history, not just you, but your entire family, like we mentioned earlier. In your opinion, what what is what is in your mind as a purist, as a pure artist in, in this industry, which you are, what is the legacy in the wrestling world, in wrestling history, what is the legacy of XPW in your mind? Uh, I don't know, because well, you know, the, there is only one ECW, so it would kind of look like a copy of ECW, but I don't want to say that, but it, but it would look that way from the outside. So okay. I, I don't know, I couldn't tell you exactly. You know, I, I respected it for a while, you know, up until right. I but you know, and I thought it was great. You know, we were having a good time, and, and I tried hard. You know, but I don't know. You what did. Would be. I'm sorry. But I don't know what the legacy would be. You know, if it would be a copycat to ECW, or, or if it would be a you know something good on its own. I don't know. I, uh, one one thing that uh, when I had Vic Grimes on, one thing he said, which might ring true, uh, you might relate to, was it was freedom. It was freedom to do whatever you wanted. Yeah, that's how ECW and, was. ECW right. was. You know, it, true. Uh, True, absolutely. The thing with Paul Heyman was he let us express our heart, art form our way. Then if that didn't work, then he helped you. But if you had something right. already, he let you run with it. Right. And and that's something to be thankful for because no one knows it more than you. Um, not to be halted, uh, your art, basically. Like you said, it's, it's an art, man. It's a 100% it's an art. Um, but before we wrap up, man, I want to thank uh, Super Genie, you too. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. And, Thanks and of course, you. I'll... Yeah, always, always good seeing you. To uh, always good seeing you, Sabu. I know it's been a long time, man, since we've seen each other. It, it probably was at one of those reunion shows, yeah. the last time we saw each other in person, man. But I'm, I'm glad to see you both are doing great. And, um, and is there anything you'd like to say uh, to the fans, or anything you want to plug right now, too? Well, I'd like to plug uh, Super Genie's GoFundMe because uh, she lost her leg a few months ago, her left leg, and she had to cut off. So we got a GoFundMe going to try to get her a new, a new bionic leg. And what is the GoFundMe GoFundMe? Uh, it's just GoFundMe, I believe, Melissa Coates. I, I, I okay. mean, he, he posts it's, it's pinned on his Twitter page, was, which is at the real Sabu ECW. Um, his uh, website is ecwsabu.com, and he's or, got his book and book. some merchandise, and and his Instagram is. At the real Sabu too, or what? Yes. The real Sabu ECW. Yeah, the real, real at the real Sabu ECW is his Instagram. And, and then I, I push a lot of his. I you know he doesn't. I mean he's modest. He doesn't push his like appearances all that much. He retweets what the promoters do. But on on at real Super Genie, I I post his merchandise. She does more and, detail. You know I I try to make sure I'm getting most of the posters up, and just that way he can just retweet what I do instead of him feeling like he's um, bragging or whatever, posting his own appearances, you know? So that's, yeah, that's sure. the important one for, for, for uh, mine in relation to, to Sabu is that real super genie. 
and we'll and we can and have, once we're done here, send me those links and then we'll drop them here during the video description. Um, but you're right, Sabu. Hey, man, you gotta you gotta start bragging some more, man. If anybody should brag, it's you, brother. <laughs> I've never been much of a bragger. Oh, uh, that's that's a hey, one of the re one of the more one of the many reasons why you're over, man, and always have been. Um, well, great you. talking to you, bro. Thank you. Great talking to you, and and thanks both of you for joining us here on Extreme Memories, right here on the Wrestling Chatter channel. You can see new episodes on the 15th, the 30th of every month. Please subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the more great content we can get you. For Super Genie, for the suicidal, homicide, genocidal, for, for the one and only. This, this, where is, I can't even see it. There it is. This side's, this side's bigger. That side's better, but I mean, with right on. And, uh, my operation, I haven't been out. I haven't been working out that much. Well, I'm, so, I'm glad. I'm glad. It. I'm glad to see you guys are both here and both healthy, and and um, I'm sure the fans are as well. I want to thank you guys on behalf of all our fans, and you guys are welcome back anytime. Thank you. God bless you both. We'll see you soon. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Extreme Memories, hosted by Chris Kloss. He's dropping new episodes every month on the 15th and 30th. You can be the first to tune in by subscribing to the Wrestling Chatter channel right here on YouTube. See you next time.